Banks are preparing to unleash a devastating wave of foreclosures. It's going to make the 2022 housing crash even worse. And in particular, folks, you got to understand these foreclosures, they've been building up over the last two years during the pandemic. There was a foreclosure moratorium. There was an eviction moratorium. We had millions of defaults where banks were not allowed to foreclose. Well, now they are allowed to foreclose and cause home prices to crash in certain cities and certain neighborhoods that are most exposed. And one thing that has me convinced that this foreclosure wave is going to be way worse than people expect is because there's so many bad loans out there on the U.S. housing market right now. Like if we look over the last 70 years at the average down payment that a home buyer puts down, we can see it's been in consistent decline. In the 50s, they were putting over 35% down. In the 70s, they were putting over 25% down. Well, today, they're only putting about 17% down, according to Fannie Mae. And as we all know, the less money that a borrower puts down to buy the house, the more likely they are to default. And I think some of this data might be a little shocking to you all because we're sold a narrative by the mainstream financial media, by people in real estate, that all of the loans in the housing market are good loans. Like I see so many people say that today. They say, oh, it was just the mid 2000s subprime bubble where we had bad loans. We fixed all that. We have good loans today. And folks, that is not true at all. What's shocking about the data I just showed you is that the average down payment today is actually lower than it was in the 2000s during the subprime bubble. And so this long-term deterioration in mortgage lending standards in America is allowing basically people who probably shouldn't own a home uh, to own a home, which is of course going to increase defaults and foreclosures. And historically, you can see when there's a surge in defaults like there was in the late 2000s during the subprime crisis, we have a corresponding increase in foreclosures. However, something funny happened during the pandemic in 2020, you can see the default rate during the pandemic surged to 8.2%, almost as high as it was during the last housing crash. But take a look at this, everyone. The foreclosures, the blue line actually kept going down as the defaults went up. And why did the foreclosures keep going down when the defaults were going up? Well, because the U.S. government kicked the can down the road on these foreclosures. They enforced a foreclosure moratorium, an eviction moratorium. And on top of all of that, they forced banks to allow extended forbearance periods that didn't allow them to foreclose even after the moratoriums ended. This, of course, artificially constricted the inventory of homes on the U.S. housing market, lowering foreclosures to even less than they were in 2018 and 2019, which helped push home prices even higher and make the housing bubble even bigger. However, here's the thing. This is now all going into reverse. Banks are starting to foreclose. Foreclosure starts are up 150% year over year, and they will continue to surge as the recession and the housing crash in America get worse, particularly in certain parts of the country, these areas in orange on this map, they're going to have the most foreclosures over the next couple of years. For instance, take Riverside, California in the Inland Empire. There's over 880,000 total homeowners in the metro. Well, of those, 230,000 have what I define as a risky or a bad mortgage that's a high likelihood of default or foreclosure. That's a sign that Riverside, as well as the other cities and neighborhoods I'm going to talk about in this video, are going to have a lot of foreclosures going forward over the next couple of years, which is going to cause inventory in their housing markets to spike. It's going to cause home prices to go way down and create a lot of great buying opportunities for opportunistic real estate investors and home buyers who want to take advantage of the fact that the typical foreclosure is purchased at a 36% discount to market value. And a great way to actually track the foreclosure activity in your market in real time is to use Zillow, everyone. This is free. Go to Zillow, go to the for sale listings in your county and make sure to check off foreclosure and pre-foreclosure and then look at other listings and you're going to see a long list potentially of homes that are either already foreclosed on and owned by the bank or are soon to be foreclosed on. You're going to see a lot of pre-foreclosures on this list from Zillow. And what a pre-foreclosure is, is when a homeowner has missed a payment, the bank files what's called a Liz pendants on the public records. And it's a sign that that property could soon be foreclosed on or going to auction. And so one strategy that actually a lot of real estate investors use is they look at the pre-foreclosures and they go directly to the homeowner, either through a mailer or they knock on their door and they say, hey, I saw that you were in pre foreclosure, maybe I could help you out. I could buy your house from you at a discount and give you the financial relief. It's a win-win situation. That's what a lot of entrepreneurial foreclosure buyers do, because if you wait until the bank actually forecloses and it goes to auction, well, there's going to be a lot more competition and more bidders, and the price will likely go up. But you know what's interesting, everyone? I've looked a lot at your comments uh, in the comment section to my videos and on the community posts, and it seems like a lot of you are still skeptical that we're going to see a foreclosure wave. I know a lot of you are saying, well, you know, I've been hearing about this foreclosure wave for a year and a half 
half and it hasn't happened yet. I'm seeing people say things like Mel, you know, Mel said, is there a general consensus to delay and avoid foreclosures because of what we learned in 2008? Maybe banks don't want to go through that again. Meanwhile, RC says he doesn't think there's going to be a foreclosure wave. He says that the notices of default are pretty low. He thinks homeowners have a lot of equity. It's not going to happen. And I'm here to tell you all, this is definitely going to happen because what you got to understand right now, the situation we're in where homeowner equity is high and, you know, the notice of default rate has gone way down since the pandemic. It's near a record low. This is very typical of the experience of right before the housing market enters a huge crash. Like if we go back to 06, 07, you can see the default rate back in 06, 07 was very low as home prices started to go down. This is the crazy thing about the last housing crash that people don't understand is that home prices were going down for about a year to a year and a half before the defaults and foreclosures exploded, which was really happening in late 2008, 2009 is when those defaults and foreclosures went up. Home prices were already going down for a year before that. So this is what you got to understand is that when we're in a housing boom and home prices are going up, it's very easy for banks to be lax with people who've defaulted on their mortgage. It's very easy for someone who's in default to sell their house uh, at a profit, right? But as the housing crash builds steam, as prices go down more and more, there's going to be increased pressure on both the bank and the homeowner to resolve this situation, especially as the recession gets worse, everyone. That's right. Remember that we are in a recession right now in America. We had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. The housing market's crashing. Consumer confidence is at an all-time low. These are all the things that typically happen at the start of a recession. So as this recession gets worse and more people lose their jobs and the unemployment rate surges, we're also going to see more new defaults and new foreclosures occur because of that. It's not just going to be, you know, the 700,000 in seriously delinquent mortgages that haven't paid their mortgage interest in two years. It's going to be a new set of people going into default because if we look historically, take a look at this, everyone, at the relationship between the default rate, the orange line, and the unemployment rate in America, the green line, you can see something very interesting. And that's that over the last 25 years, there is a tremendous correlation. As the unemployment rate goes up, the default rate goes up and vice versa. So this is a new environment that we're in in the last two decades is that because of these bad and risky loans, when we have a recession, defaults are going to surge and under normal circumstances where the government doesn't intervene, so will foreclosure. And heading back to this map, the markets that I think are most in the crosshairs of these foreclosures, you can see it's the areas in orange. We talked about Riverside, California. You can see there's a lot of areas in California, especially Central California that are in orange. So is Las Vegas, so is Phoenix. Really the Southwest is going to be a hotbed of foreclosure activity in America. And so will actually Florida. Florida. If we look at Florida, we see a lot of orange as well. Plus, watch out for Atlanta and Memphis. These are two markets that I also am predicting are going to have lots of foreclosures over the next couple of years. And I know a lot of you are wondering, how did I calculate this data projecting where the foreclosures are going to be worse? Well, it's actually really simple. I took data from Fannie Mae on millions and millions of mortgages that were originated over the last four years in America, and I calculated the share of risky mortgages originated in different metro areas. In particular, I focused on three types of loans that I deemed risky. Number one was FHA mortgages that come from HUD. They're typically a three to 5% down payment. The default rate on FHA loans is around three times higher than conventional mortgages. So the more FHA loans in your city or your neighborhood, something you need to understand, the more foreclosures it will be. In addition, I looked at investor mortgages and second home purchase mortgages because these types of loans also have higher default rates. Of course, people don't live in the home. They're gonna be more likely to let go of the home in hard financial times. Meanwhile, the areas in green you know, like a Pittsburgh, only 14% of all the homes in Pittsburgh are, are risky mortgages. And they have less of a chance of foreclosures. And you can see predominantly, you know, the Midwest is really heavily in green as are parts of the Southeast here in North Carolina. But here's another thing that you all need to be paying attention to is this is not just city by city. This is neighborhood by neighborhood. And this was the data that really shocked me when I dug into it is that you could say, well, okay, my city might be at risk of foreclosures and you might start looking in your city for those pre foreclosures on Zillow. But really what you got to understand is these foreclosures are going to be most in certain neighborhoods. Let's take my hometown, Dallas, for example, we're looking at all the different census tracts in the Dallas metro area and they're color coded by the percentage of risky mortgages. The areas in blue are ones with a very low share of risky mortgages. Like you can see predominantly in the northern suburbs 
suburbs in Dallas, I know in Frisco and Roanoke, we have a very low share of risky mortgages that are either FHA investor or second home mortgages. So there's gonna be fewer defaults and foreclosures in these areas in blue. But then if we zoom in, for instance, to Fort Worth, everyone take a look at this. I mean, we have census tracts where 60 to 70% of all the mortgages originated in 2021 were a risky mortgage. So very important to understand these locational differences. If you're someone who wants to buy a foreclosure to live in potentially, well, understand that you're likely gonna be buying in certain neighborhoods that are probably lower income, higher poverty rate, higher crime. Now, one last thing I wanna address is a comparison. I know a lot of you are wondering, Nick, is this foreclosure wave going to be as big as the one that happened in the mid-2000s when there was over 10 million foreclosure starts in America in a five-year span. Because after all, the average down payments for home buyers are lower today than they were back in the mid-2000s. The average debt-to-income ratios are just as high. So by those metrics, the loans are just as risky, right? Well, there are certain ways that lending has improved over the last 15 years. For instance, borrower credit scores are higher today. There's also fewer adjustable rate loans. And for the most part, people have to verify their income now before they get a mortgage. So for those reasons, I don't think this foreclosure foreclosure wave is going to be as big as the one in the mid 2000s when we saw 10 million foreclosures. However, we don't need to see 10 million foreclosures. We don't even need to see 5 million foreclosures to make this housing crash get really, really bad. Because right now in America, inventory is already exploding. Home prices are already crashing in many parts of America. So just adding a couple million foreclosures to this situation is going to make this housing crash much, much worse.